Dearly beloved of the Lord God, we thank God for this opportunity. We thank God for the time that he gives us to think through his word. I invite you to the word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we appreciate for the time that you give us, that we are still alive. And there are circumstances in our lives that we have to meet. And we pray the Lord you give us the stamina, you give us the faith to withstand. Just like we are going to share in this word, bless us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for every moment that he gives us. Like now, he gives us an opportunity to interact with his word. And just like verse 4 of the Psalms 23, that even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so I begin with that Psalm 23 verse 4, because what we're going to talk about in this episode is still in the personality of prophet Daniel. Daniel remains our personality and we share more about the events that occurred in his prophecy. Remember, we have been thinking through the personalities of the Bible and there are people that they are the people that God used to do great things. Some things written down for us to read, some things acted and from the actions we see God working. And because they acted in the way God desired, something is written down here for us to learn from. Now we're going to talk about the three young men. You see, they were not writers. This young man acted something. And remember that actually Daniel is a prophecy that comes to energize the people who were in exile at that time. And it was called Babylonian exile. There are a number of leaders that did great things. Some of those great things were good, but also some of the great things that were bad. And so in this case, we look at these three young men by name, and we shall look at them facing something that was so terrifying. But even when it was so terrifying, these three young men, they form a personality of the time. That actually we think about them, that something so terrifying, but they remained standing strong in the faith. And so let us dive in the book of Prophet Daniel, chapter 3. And we're not going to read the entire story, but we're just going to read a few verses as a basis of our interaction with God's word. In chapter 3, the three young men that I'm talking about, they were given new names. And in the other episode, I mentioned about, uh, about them. And now I bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Babylonian names that are given to the Hebrew boys. And they leave a lot for us as people who are living in this generation. And of course, these scriptures have been read generation after generation, but the word of God remains standing. And so they never wrote, but they acted. And so through many things that we do, some of them are actions. And sometimes even the words that we speak, they leave a mark on somebody. And so let us think about this young man in the book of Prophet Daniel. And we are going to read chapter 3, not in, it, in its entirety. But let us begin at verse 8. Now in verse 8, this is what the word of God says about the fiery furnace. That therefore at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. And I pray that you take note of the key terms that could be surfacing in here. And here it is that maliciously accused the Jews. They declared to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And so the purpose, the passage is about the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had put up and had in, required that everybody should fall down, should bow down, and worship the daddy, worship the image. Now in verse 11, the Bible says that, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning fiery 
furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This man, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Now you see, they are forming a basis of the accusation against the three young men who were Jews. And the Bible has already mentioned maliciously accusing them. Then King Nebuchadnezzar in furious, in furious rage commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. And indeed these people were brought before the king. And the king told them what he had commanded. And those are verses 13 to 15. And in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king and said, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, that's verse 18, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. These young people, these young men were resolute. They determined to believe God in heaven, the father of heaven who created earth and heaven. And so they determined and said, our God shall save us from this fire. And they said, but even if he doesn't, we shall not bow down to worship your golden image. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. You know, the other, the other one was furious rage. And now they qualify it to fury. He actually now is, he expands his anger to another degree, to another level. You know, the situation does not happen and the anger is increased the rage is increased. The situation goes beyond. And so he was in a fury and the expression of his face was changed. Again, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times. Seven times. Heated seven times. Seven times more than it was usually heated. And he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fire furnace. Then, verse 21, verse 21, then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace. Verse 22, because the king, king's order was urgent and the furnace was overheated, the flames of the fire killed those who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning fiery furnace. The fire instead did the opposite of what they had intended. Catching, catching those that had brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them into the fire. And the Bible is saying that actually they fell bound. They were bound into the fire. Fell, foul, fell bound into the fire. It had already cleared because it was overheated cleared the bringers. There are certain situations that can bring you, wanting to devastate you, but there's a way God orchestrates things. There's a way God orchestrates things. He turns things round, upside down. Whatever situation, God knows how he deals with it. And now in verse 24, then the king was astonished and rose up in haste he declared to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? 
They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But I see, pray the Lord, but I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fire furnace and he declared, thankfully, thank God that the fire did catch him. Remember the other ones, the ones who brought, when they were throwing the three young men into the fire, the fire ate them up. But now this one, he came close and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. Verse 27, and all those people, the governors, the satraps, the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not, the fire had not, had not harmed any, anybody, had not harmed anyone, and no smell of the fire was upon them. Friends, reading these scriptures, you think that it was a drama. But the situation at the time, these people faced it. These things were written down for us, for me, for you. To read to think through, to meditate upon them and apply them. Did I say these people did not, yes, they not have a name in the book, in the, the book, the book name bearing their name. But then in the scripture, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three young men who had been brought from Israel and very many others, but because of their outstanding nature, they were recognized that the king had placed them in positions of responsibility. And here, because they were notable, things were happening and they were doing things godly way, not Babylonian way. They were doing things Jude Jewish way because actually God had given them the beginning. They started their life as people that read the scripture, apply scripture, and there are situations where you can be. When you read a strict scripture, it comes alive. And you apply it in a situation and God knows how he does his things. He delivers his people in various ways. These people had read, because actually when the children of Israel leaving Egypt, going to the promised land, God gave them regulations gave them guidelines, things that guide their lifestyle. And these were called commandments. But I just want to pick out one in the book of Exodus chapter 20, where he mentions actually, worship no other gods but me. That's commandment number one. Number two, he says, do not make for yourselves images of anything. And now this Exodus story in chapter 20, verse 3, 5, Worship no other gods but me. Now, you see, there are times when you read the scripture, we store them in our minds. These help us to sail through certain situations. There are moments when you can be there and you see, but is, is, can this happen? Now, these people show us that this commandment number two holds. Because there was a moment when it came to reality, that actually they had to remember, they had to call to mind what they had read. Now what this enables me to remember is, read the scripture, store scripture, meditate upon scripture. There are situations that can arise in your life that actually that scripture is going to be relevant to help you. Because again, if you don't have it, if you have not stored it, time will come when you will be caught on the wrong side and you will do things that are not required by God, and yet 
the scripture says so. So prior proper preparation prevents poor performance. P, 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 P. I have always said about that, that actually these people were actually already with the scriptures in their mind. They had memorized them. They had, they were living scriptures. So one most important lesson that I gather from these three young men in the foreign land, and I presume that actually maybe in the foreign land they were not, they need to have any written scriptures with them because they were exilees there. Maybe they were not allowed. Of course, like we have countries in the world today where scriptures are not supposed to be, to be read public, to have written scripture. Now, it only helps you at your young age, at any time that you have an opportunity, like you have an opportunity with your Bible, you sit down and read. There will, be, there will come a time when this scripture will be very relevant and applicable. So these young men look back, Exodus chapter 20, and say, God gave instructions that worship no other gods but me. Do not make for yourselves images for worship, for veneration. And now here they do that. And so they are able to come out and stand before the king and say, our God does not require this. Our God is a God of heaven. He's not represented, he's not represented by anything here on earth either a tree or a stone or whatever it is. Now, for us, you know, you are not to worship your image, your king. Now, take note, friends, that this is very important for me. You have read this story. I have read it. And now it comes another time. Maybe I've preached about it. Now it comes another time. Now, here it is. That actually, this, is, this scripture is very important. Now, another thing that you need to take note of, that these people dedicated themselves to the service of God. And obedience to God is laws. Can it be costly, really? Can you believe that? That obedience can be so costly? Choosing to obey God can be costly. Remember what these people went through, the three young men? And the ones that were concentrating on, their lives were in danger. Their lives were in jeopardy because of the situation in which they were. But... In as much as the situation looked intensely dangerous, their faith stepped higher. Pray the Lord. And all of us have situations that we face in our life that are so fiery like these ones. It may not be the real exact burning fire, like the Namugongo fire, Uganda matters, whatever it was, like, but the more they persecuted them, the more they ridiculed them, the more they wounded them, the more their faith was elevated to another level. The reason why they stand and say, oh, king, our God is going to save us. Our God is going to save us. But even if he does not. And now this scripture is showing something. Pray the Lord. Thankfully, God saved them from the fires, the fire furnace. But it also caters for those like the Namu, because someone would say, but look, Namugongo fire burned the people. But now this scripture is saying, these three young men catered for those people that would come like the Namugongo people that were burned. Because they said, first, God is going to save us. And then they said, but even if he does not, like this Namugongo, the, Namu, the, 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 the Uganda matters, we will not bow down and worship your idol. And so for me, I pick this one as something which is very, very important. That in verse 18, but if not, if he does not. And so these, these people, like those that band here in Uganda, whatever, and other places where people are being killed, they don't, not that God does not care, not that the God does not love them, but these scriptures, gives us options that actually God does his things his own way. And so at that moment, they were saved really and then they come out. So what I was saying was actually their faith was up, up stepped. They went higher and higher. So friends, we take note that our God does his own things in his own timing. Take note also that in the fire, something impossible happened. 
Remember that our God can do and he did does impossible things. For this young man, impossible things happened. Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Pray the Lord. The reason why we talk about them, they survived. And their survival, no skills were required there. They didn't have any skill. Because if it was, a, if it was a water, you needed a skill to swim. Some of us fear water. Maybe because actually you, you fear it because you have no skill of swimming. Now, there was no skill needed here. Fire is fire. But even if you are able to swim, even if it was water, you are bound. You cannot move your hands. Bound. So no human skill, no human power, no human intervention could help. Because they were already there. Now God does the impossible things. Now the presence of the fourth person, Savior in the fire. We trust the Savior in the fire. They survived the fire because the first person, the Savior, was with them. And so, always beware. Whenever, whichever situation, whenever you are, the fourth person in your situation. I picked it very seriously. Actually, I always plead with God. May I be with the fourth person, another person with me. The fourth person in the whatever situation, is it sickness? Is it poverty? Is it lack? Is it whatever situation? Is it stress? Is it depression? Whatever it is. Take note of the fourth person. God ensures that you are not alone. And I picked it very seriously because these young men, these young people knew where their salvation was. And how I pray that we too shall know where our salvation is. That even when we die, even when the fires take us, even when the waters take us, we know actually God remains God. We learn to hold to our Christian uh, convictions, Christian um, you know, meditations, like I've already said at the beginning, that actually what you do now may be helpful for you tomorrow. So should we live the righteous lives? Shall we try, during our generation, young people, try, should we live for us an example? And may God do something for us. And you and me are taking this from these young people, and may God help you and may God help me as well. That you shall have a testimony. That even if Little is written about us. Even if little is known about us. Can it be, can it be, may it be the little that energizes somebody, the little that encourages somebody, that actually your life of testimony will change some other person. And finally, as I turn to the finish, God can rescue us. God can rescue you from whatever situation. And these young people said, but even if he doesn't, can you make a resolve that even if he doesn't, even if you don't get rich, he remains God. Even if I die, he remains God. Even if whatever has not come during my lifetime, he remains God. Our situation does not change the Godship. Our situation does not do that. So I will not bow down. We shall not bow down. You should not bow down. So miraculously, these people were saved and God was with them. So remember what God had promised in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. I will not go there to read, but just this chapter 43, fear not. So he says, when you walk through the fire, you not be consumed. The waters shall not take you. So chapter, 20, chapter 43, verses 1 to 3, talk about, so God can bring you through the fire. Sometimes your miracle can be in the fire. This young man, their miracle was in the fire. Your protection, my protection can be in the fire. There are situations that you can be in, you think that you are helplessly there, but when your protection is there, your protection can be in the fire, your salvation can be in the fire, you know, your help can be in a situation where you, which you think that actually is beyond you. And God shows it through this young man. So promotion, your promotion can be through the fire. So this young man, actually the Bible says actually when you read on, you see actually they were actually, their ranks, their ranks grew, their ranks, actually they were promoted even to higher positions. So your position, your position may be in a situation in which you are. You only have to stand firm, you only have to remain straight, you only have to remain prayerful, you only have to remain faithful. 
your promotion, your marriage, your what can mean a situation as long as you don't spoil your, tes your testimony. Don't destroy your testimony. Hold on to your testimony. And so, these people, these young people, despite the hostile situation of trials and temptations, remain faithful. So I want to urge us all to remain faithful. To remain faithful. Your promotion, your salvation, your help can meet the situation in which you are. Shedra Kamesha can be Nego leave as an example that actually we should never give up. And may God who helped Shedra Kamesha can be look, may he be your God. May he be my God. Situations can burn us, but may we emerge without scar, may we emerge without harm. Emerge victoriously in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen.